Grading major NBA free agent pickups, the Bulls and Heat are the biggest stakeholders so far, while the Knicks and Lakers have made some decent under-the-radar moves. This video, Professor D. Flo evaluates the biggest signings in which players switch teams for the 2022 season. Stay tuned to find out the biggest winner of the early offseason. Before continuing, over three quarters of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed, so if you enjoy my content, help the channel get to 50k by hitting subscribe. The former Laker Alex Caruso signed a three-year, $37 million deal to join the Chicago Bulls. I'm giving this a B plus. Caruso's an above-average perimeter defender who's posted a steal per game in under 22 minutes for the last two years. Also, Caruso shot 40% from three-point range last year. A $9.5 million cap hit for a player who does that is an absolute bargain for Chicago. The first of two major New York free agent pickups we're looking at is Evan Fournier. He just led France to the gold medal game where they'll take on a Kevin Durant-led US team. But the Frenchman still had time to work out a four-year, $78 million deal with New York. At 28 years of age, Evan averaged 17 points on solid efficiency for the Magic and Celtics ranking 24th among players in three-point percentage. Fournier will provide some nice floor spacing for Julius Randle and RJ Barrett, but in the playoffs against Brooklyn last year, the Nets played whoever offense on him, so given he's a defensive liability, his $19.5 million cap hit is a tad pricey. Solid acquisition, but I'm giving this a C. As you've likely heard, given it's one of the biggest headlines right now, Lonzo Ball's headed to Chi-Town for four years and $85 million. A breakout season made Lonzo Ball the most desirable restricted free agent. Chicago signed him in the first few minutes of free agency for Thomas Sadoransky, Garrett Temple, and a second round pick. Ball's defensive versatility, how he can impact the game, whether he has the ball or doesn't, plus his developing three-point shot, are how this deal is going to ultimately be judged. Complementing the Levine Vucevic pick and roll is also key for Ball. He'll need to knock down some shots, drive on closeouts, and find unique ways to keep his defender attached to him. Lonzo has a lot of room to grow, but the Bulls are paying him for his expected progression and impactful two-way production. This gets a B plus. P.J. Tucker taking his talents to South Beach is a free agency acquisition I haven't heard many people talking about, but it's a major deal nonetheless. The 36-year-old grizzled veteran has proved himself as the toughest perimeter defender to deal with in the NBA. I'm about to talk about the Lowry pickup, but P.J.'s elite 3 and D production adds another element of danger to Miami's starting lineup, so the Tucker to Miami acquisition deserves more respect. A $7.5 million cap hit is nothing for a player of his caliber. This deal gets an A. Kyle Lowry's a class act off the court. He's a hell of a leader in the locker room, and he's a fan favorite in the community. The man's earned every penny of his three-year $90 million contract. For this upcoming season, he'll turn Miami back into the contenders they were in 2020. The problem is, Lowry's defense did slightly fall off last year, and that's expected given he's got a hefty 16 years of NBA mileage under his belt. If father time starts to show itself, I worry that Kyle's $31 million cap hit when he's 37 will be too much for him to live up to. That's why I'm giving this a solid B. The young Houston Rockets are signing a valuable center in Daniel Tice to a four-year, $36 million deal. The German big man should be a good mentor for Christian Wood. He can shoot the rock well for a near seven-footer. Of course, he can also block shots and score well around the basket. I expected a contender to sign Tice, but he'll fit nicely with a developing squad who is in desperate need of some talented veterans to surround their youth. But for a team headed toward the lottery and needing as much cap space as possible, I thought committing $36 million to Tice was just a little bit pricey. Houston's GM gets a C-. Devontae Graham's going to be Lonzo Ball's replacement in New Orleans. The Pelicans acquired him in a sign-and-trade, with Charlotte giving them a lottery-protected 2022 first-round pick. This was a great chance taken by the young Pels because Graham's an outstanding three-point marksman who has a ton of potential with his speed and playmaking. His overall efficiency has to improve, but a four-year, $47 million deal was a solid one to make for Chicago, B-. 
All of the Lakers free agent pickups took veteran minimum contracts. From Malik Monk to Dwight Howard, Kent Bazemore, and Trevor Ariza, LA made some solid additions, but Carmelo Anthony joining LeBron made the biggest headlines. Coach Vogel, along with James and Davis, will now try to win Melo his first ring, but Anthony still has some scoring capabilities left in the tank. It's fair to question, given his age, whether he'll have enough left in the tank come the playoffs, but since there was no risk involved and Melo's a legend, I'm giving the GM a B plus for this deal. The former Nick sharpshooter Reggie Bullock is headed to Texas on a three-year, $30.5 million deal. Bullock continues to improve his game. He's had four straight seasons of starting experience. The 6'6 wing averaged 10.9 points, 3.4 rebounds, and 0.8 steals in 30 minutes per game last year for New York. He shot 44.2% from the field, 41% on his threes, and 90.9% from the charity stripe. The Slovenian sensation Luka Doncic needs every bit of shooting around him that he can get, so this deal gets an A-. Dougie McBuckets is going to play under the legend Coach Pop in San Antonio for the next three years on an annual salary of around $14 million. It seems like a lot because, well, it's Doug McDermott after all. But then I found out this man shot 53% from the field last year, and before this past season, he was at least top 15 in the league in three-point percentage for the previous four seasons. The young Keldon Johnson, who has a chance to be an all-star in my opinion, will tremendously benefit from having a sniper like Dougie next to him. This deal gets an A-, minus, just like the Bullock deal. DeMar DeRozan's in the prime of his career and has been a premier scorer in this league for quite some time. The Bulls caps off a dreamlike first week of free agency by locking down Debo in a sign and trade. They did have to give up Thaddeus Young and Aminu to San Antonio, but that just means more time for Patrick Williams. Chicago's getting not only an outstanding bucket getter, but a great playmaker as well. 21 and 7 averages on 50% shooting from the field is a stat line rarely seen among NBA players, but it just goes to show how well rounded DeMar's offensive game is. So I'm giving this deal an A for the Chicago Bulls. After tearing his ACL, Spencer Dinwiddie's going to get a fresh three year, $62 million contract to play in the nation's capital. Washington needed a point guard after trading for Westbrook, but this was a surprising move. Many, including myself, expected the Wizards to look towards the 2022 draft lottery, but this signing indicates they're trying to be competitive. Beal and Dinwiddie are both scoring guards, so it'll be interesting to see how they mesh, but the mix of talent around their backcourt is severely lacking. Kuzma, Harrell, and Pope all showed flashes of being end-of-the-bench talents last year in LA, so I don't see why the Wizards front office is giving Dinwiddie 20 million per year, but that's just me. I'm giving this move a C-. The second Spurs pickup in today's video is much more questionable than the first. Zach Collins has been extremely injury prone in his short NBA career so far. The 23 year olds played 11 games in the last two seasons, being forced to have two surgeries, first on his shoulder and then to his ankle. It would be miraculous if he could regain the form that he showed off as a rookie and sophomore in Rip City. I'm definitely rooting for him, but this was a weird signing to me. However, things have a way of working out for the Spurs organization, so who knows. Still, I'm giving this a D+. The Knicks getting Walker on a veteran minimum, returning cardiac Kemba to where he shined in college at Madison Square Garden was a complete steal for New York's front office. Wow, steal for New York's front office. Never thought I'd be saying that. Kemba's not going to be able to chuck up shots like he has been for the past two seasons when he plays under coach Tom Thibodeau. After being traded away from the Celtics to the Thunder last month, OKC bought out Walker last week, and right on cue, Knicks GM Scott Perry put the four-time All-Star in orange and blue threads. When Kemba won the NCAA championship with the UConn Huskies back in 2011, the most iconic shot he hit on the path to achieving that came at MSG. It's incredibly fitting that he's made the garden his home, and I'm sure Knicks fans can't wait to see the college legend play 41 games there this season. The biggest winner of this offseason to me has been the Chicago Bulls. You can make a good argument for the Heat, Knicks, and even the Lakers, but putting DeRozan next to Levine was a damn good move. 
And with the Lonzo and Caruso signings in addition to that, the Bulls have had the best offseason so far in my opinion. Two shoutouts next video from my last video and this video, but let me know which signing has been the biggest impact in the comments. This was D-Flow, have a great one and I'll see you next video.